I'm excited. Welcome back to the 2017 Splatoon World Inkling Invitational as we showcase Splatoon 2. We're down to our finals. Two teams, Deadbeat representing USA and Dynamu representing Japan. What are they battling for? Well, we have got the award right next to us. We'd love to introduce the Splatoon Sterling Squid, over 30 pounds of bragging rights to the victorious team. These two teams will face off and not a best of three, not a best of five, but a best of seven as yes. they get set. So it's gonna be the first team to win four matches. And let's show you the order of these matches and how we will approach them as these teams get set to square off. And we've already seen both teams very impressive in elimination mode. Dynamu has been flawless so far. So as you look at this, Ashley, and here how, here's how it goes. Splat zones in game one, tower control game two, turf war game three, Rainmaker game four. And if necessary, we go back to game tower control, turf war, and Rainmaker. So Ashley, both these teams on this stage, what do you think is going through the mind of these players? Oh, I mean, I think that really right now, they are so locked in that nothing, nothing's different than just playing a game uh, any other time. I mean, they play at such a high level. I think it really is, uh, it's, it's almost like a muscle memory. You, you sit down, you're ready to play, you're locked in, you say, okay. I know what I did the last few matches. I know how I can adjust. They've been watching each other play this afternoon. So I think there's definitely some uh, some opportunity for some strategy and some yeah. counter strategy. Right, these teams are, as you said, completely in the zone. I mean, I know that when I play Splatoon, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking about anything else. And people can be talking to me, I'm like, what? You know, because like, yeah. I, just, I don't hear anything, I don't see anything except the game. Well, what we were discussing with Dynamu before we started, and we've seen evident at this point as we get started with our first match in the grand finals of the 2017 Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. Dynamu representing Japan, taking on Deadbeat, representing North America. Deadbeat has found their stride recently. Dynamu dominant since the beginning. Let's get started on Inkblot Art Academy. In orange for Deadbeat, they're gonna go with the heavy splatling, two splatter shots, and a slosher. Meanwhile, for Dynamu and the turquoise, you've got a splatter shot pro, a slosher, a charger, and a roller. And early action, Dynamu getting out to the middle of the splat zone, but Deadbeat has a chance. It's going back and forth early on, Ashley. I think we're gonna see Dynamo head up to that top area and really kind of establish himself up top. But it's splatted. Wit takes him out. Critical splat by Wit, because you saw Dynamu try to time up the ink storm with Dynamon climbing to the top. Akibato getting the splat right now, trying to push back Deadbeat. Right now, you've got Dynamu in the middle of that splat zone with an 83 100 advantage, 3-3 three, three on the field. Yeah, Atobar is trying really hard to get some ink on the ground there, try to try to take that splat zone. I think that big giant chunk of orange is the last thing keeping them from taking it over. Uh, and I mean, honestly, they lost control, but can they hold? Wit and Deadby gonna go ahead and seize control as they get a whole bucket of orange ink in the middle of the splat zone. 86, 61, 30 second penalty for Dynamu. Now let's see if Deadbeat could push back Dynamu. 4-3 on the field, special ready to go for power and that heavy splat lane whenever he chooses to do so. Here comes some Tenta missiles to try and keep Dynamu at bay. No success there. However, Deadbeat gonna take the early lead. A lot of this orange one. on the ground. 40 left. 4-4 four, four on the field, but you see three specials ready for Dynamu as they get set to make that ink storm in the middle of the zone. Yeah, that was the way for them to sort of push forward because for a while there, I mean, they were doing a, I mean, Deadbeat was doing a really good job keeping Dynamu out from that splat zone. 61-39, and Dynamu has control of the splat zone as they start to get that timer to tick down. That penalty is now down to just 15 seconds. 4-3 advantage on the field for Dynamu as we see Tim trying to go up this ink-proof ramp. It's gonna slow him down a little bit, trying to flank on Dynamon. Dynamon gonna make it rain, though, by flicking that Dynamo roller and using that horizontal and vertical flick to cost him down. I mean, that, oh, that vertical flick is brutal, it's, and he really just uses it to its maximum effectiveness. However, Deadbeat with the lead. 39.57. However, no penalty for Dynamu as that timer starts to tick really close to a tie here. 46.39. It's going to be Dynamu that's going to try and take the lead unless Deadbeat can do something. And that's the lead. Oh, just at the last wow. second. Deadbeat able to get it. Deadbeat trying to seize control. 39.38. Deadbeat trails Dynamu. 35 second penalty. Control in the middle right now for Deadbeat. Deadbeat. 3-1 on the field for Deadbeat. Here goes Wit going to the top of the tower, trying to keep Dynamu at bay, Ashley. Yeah, you can see he's splashing that area next to the ink-proof ramp, and he's just trying to keep out Dynamu, saying, hey, guys, like, you're going to have to not only get through here, but you have to now paint, you've got to ink that ground. And Deadbeat 
Beat goes and takes the lead, but they only get it by one point as Dynamu. Now facing a 40 second penalty, but then Deadbeat's gonna seize control of this flat zone, trying to keep Dynamu at bay. Hexen gonna drop down. Meanwhile, here comes Wit with that splosher. And you've got the Ink Storm. The ink storm happening That's here. trying to cover the area right there. And Splat Zone still up for grabs at this point. 22 38 advantage. Deadbeat still up wow, for grabs at this point. Splash Impressive. Wow. Double splat right there. That is huge as it's now 4 2 on the field. Dynamu going to seize control of the Splat Zone sitting on top of that tower. However, they have a stiff 28 second penalty to overcome. Here comes some tens of missiles and the territory in the middle. That Splat Zone going to be re seized by oh. Deadbeat. Frantic match that we have here, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. And Autobaro absolutely just going bananas right now, inking, splatting, getting all over the place. He's all over the shop. It is incredible to watch him play. And you know what? He's not panicking. That's exactly how he's splatting all these people. Atubato normally averages 20 splats per match. You can see how an individual effort can turn the tide. 38-22. However, just four seconds left in that penalty for Dynamite. Slight lead for Deadbeat. However, Dynamu keeping that timer going down. 22-28. Dynamu trying to reseize the lead. However, great defense by Deadbeat. Oh, they're able to retake the middle of the good. flat zone, and they're going to cut down into the penalty. 47 seconds left. 40 second penalty for Dynamu. Meanwhile, you're Deadbeat. You just have to play some defense and keep Dynamu out of the zone. Andre oh. Bardo oh. going to take advantage of that one on one. But here comes a splash down. Oh. That's going to get it by power with the splash down. 30 seconds left, 22-25. Penalty going down for Deadbeat. And you've got Dynamo trying They've to see control, start taking but the action. specials by Deadbeat really helping out right now, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They have got to take control. Uh, Dynamo's got to take control back if they're thinking they're going to win this. 25-22, Dynamo, though, with a 40-second penalty. Can they retake control of this black zone? 10 seconds left. This might be headed into overtime. We'll see. It's still up for grabs. First team to seize control. And now Dynamo in control with 34 seconds left. We're going to search go to overtime here. Yes. Now Deadbeat can take control of the splat zone. It's going to be over. They'll get the victory. 20 seconds left. Dynamu. They just Frank need to hold top. on. We see the tension missiles. They lost control. Can Deadbeat seize control? And Deadbeat Deadbeat going to do a fine job wow. in overtime, what? taking control of the splat zone. And we saw the specials. Well timed use of those for Deadbeat here, Ashley. So, so good, so well coordinated. I mean, they are obviously communicating super well, making sure that they're launching everything they need to launch right when it needs to go. What a match. I mean, that, that was, was back and forth all the way down to the end. I'm exhausted from that. <laughs> no, we got more, we got more. We got more, absolutely. So you saw Dynamu get out to the early lead and they really tried to time that ink storm along with Dynamon hopping on top of the tower. But Deadbeat doing a fine job of making sure they never really seize control of that top of that tower, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, you saw a lot of burst bombs, a lot of sprinklers going up there. Just, just keeping anybody from getting up there and really establishing any kind of advantage for a particular amount of time. Let's take a look at a couple replays from that absolutely exhilarating match between Deadbeat and Dynamu, where Deadbeat gets the advantage in the very first opening match in our grand finals. Here's Atu Badr trying to get that zone covered. Gets the splat on power. Boom, mid-air. splats in a row, mid-air on the splashdown. Hexen gonna get splatted by Atubato. Atubato gonna get another splat on power. And this was when Dynamu was getting set to make their push. However, Deadbeat didn't give up. Here's Wit using the slosher, just covering territory. Well-timed usage of the Tenta missiles. And then you saw the splat mid-air by Tim. So Deadbeat doing everything you need to do right at the end to win this one. Absolutely, and you notice he threw also a suction bomb up on the top there to get his opponent off of the high ground. You gotta clear the club sometime. Yeah, I mean, right. empty it out. That splat when he was mid splashdown, I mean, if that thing lands, it paints, or it's, sorry, it inks a big portion of that splat zone. Yeah. So you, like, that was absolutely incredible. I was Very so... impressive by both teams. And as we get set for our next matchup, it's gonna be tower control on Moray Tower. So we're gonna see a lot more action as these teams get set to ride the tower. As we mentioned, grand finals, best of seven, Deadbeat representing USA, taking on Dynamu from Japan, Dynamu championed over 900 teams in their regional qualifier. Splat Zone's first game, that goes to Deadbeat. So 1-0 advantage for them. 
Meanwhile, our next game will be tower control. And what have we learned from how the way these two teams play tower control about how important it is to make sure you have a path for the tower moving forward? Yeah, I think uh, we're definitely going to see a lot of power is going to probably uh, be that support person trying to make clear a path, get people out of the way over on Dynamu's side. And then Dynamu, obviously, Dynamon is going to be right in that tower. We all know. <laughs> Absolutely right. And Eric, when you've got a player like Dynamon on the opposition that you're facing, that you know that loves to get on the tower, how much do you potentially change your strategy to try to make sure that he can't secure the tower and you keep him out of his comfort zone? Yeah, I mean, as we said, it's all about cutting off those lanes of attack. So if they can do that, Dynamite can't get to the tower in the first place. I predict we will be seeing a lot of Toxic Mist. I predict we will be seeing a lot of, of uh, bombs. Or a lot of bombs. In the orange, they're going to go with a Blaster, a Slosher, a Charger, a Roller. Meanwhile, Deadbeat in the purple, you've got the Heavy Splatling, two Splatter Shots, and a Blaster. Those Blasters, as we know, very popular in tower control mode. Early 99 nothing advantage. That's not going to sit very long, but Dynamu hopping on the tower. One-on-one -on -one situation here. Tim going to get the advantage over Kakashino. Meanwhile, tower going to be reclaimed by Deadbeat. Deadbeat trying to get some points to their score. 88, 100 advantage All for right, Dynamu. There they go. Yeah, you can see Deadbeat has power on top. He's working that heavy splat wing. He's going to try to clear a path, paint, get some paint down, help his teammates get in front of that tower. However, power getting splatted on the tower at that checkpoint. And that's what we talked about. The checkpoints really change the dynamic of tower control because you can no longer just ride the tower and sort of pivot behind that barrier. And hide, yeah. And that's, that's a key thing here that I am very excited about because I can't tell you how many times I watched the tower just ride away into the sunset without me. And I was like, wait, please come back. Tim going to hop off the tower, get the splat on Ajibato, try to make some room. Let's see if Deadbeat can be ready for the onslaught coming from Dynamu up top. Here comes the splashdown, oh. and the tower is going to get to the first checkpoint, trying to clear it. That's going to be critical as far as helping Deadbeat make subsequent pushes, and that'll be clear. 50-88 advantage Deadbeat as they get set to move forward deeper into Dynamu territory. They are pushing hard right now. You can see there are teammates jumping onto the tower. It's going to help that count, get that countdown down. Down a little bit faster. Power doing a fine job of backing off the tower, avoiding to get splatted. You can go ahead and give up control of the tower for a little bit. It's not going to reset as fast as the Rainmaker. It keeps you alive, keeps you special charged also. Yeah, he's able to stop. But, oh man, that was some really nice uh, back alley healings right there. That was a really nice, uh, that was a really nice splatting happening right there by Dynamo. Yeah, no thank you card's going to be exchanged between both these teams. Is Dynamo going to start flicking some more ink on that wall? And you notice the vertical flick allows those rollers to climb walls so much better. Right now, 88-19 advantage. Deadbeat at this point. Two checkpoints still remain for Dynamo. So they're facing quite the up tower battle here at Parade oh. Tower. And so if you're Deadbeat, oh, impressive splat right there by Aku Bardo with the Pachink. If you're Deadbeat, how defensively minded you can be right now? I mean, right now, all they have to do is just hold that tower. I mean, it's just... Just, just keep it out of their zone, and they win. And so it's, but it's two and a half minutes, and anything can happen. Dynamo really, really working that roller, but getting caught up in Toxic Mist. That Toxic Mist going to slow you down, take away your ink. However, Dynamo going to ride that tower. Dynamo at the first checkpoint. They've got a cavalcade of squids at that tower, trying to get through that checkpoint. That's going to help them with some more additional pushes. And it is now 53-19. Dynamo trying to make their critical push in this match. Deadbeat trying to keep them at bay. Two minutes left in this one. 2-2 two, two on the field. Now a 3-2 advantage for Deadbeat. Yeah, you can see Power has been trying to sort of keep this tower at bay by using that heavy splatling and doing a good job of it. But wow, Tim, take get just get up on that tower. Tim with the splat on Walker Room. That's going to allow Deadbeat to gain control of the tower and just let that reset to the middle as 148. Now the clock becomes the friend of Deadbeat. They want that thing to tick down as look, fast as possible. Look at all of this ink. There's ink everywhere. This is amazing. This is this is the level play you're seeing. There is literally battles to be found everywhere on this map. It is hectic in the middle of this map. And you've got both teams really at different levels right now trying to apply pressure. Nobody can really get that advantage at this point. It's been a bit of a stalemate the last 30 seconds. 125 left in this one. 1929. Here comes a splashdown oh. as Tim going to go ahead and get the splash and that's going to help pave the way. Now look at what Tim's doing. Clearing some ink to give a path for the tower and Tim's teammates to make sure that they can support that tower and its push. Yeah, able to push forward, also able to get out. That's, that's a key thing. Once that tower goes beyond a certain point, you want to be able to get out of there if stuff starts getting a little heated. One minute left, 4-1 on the field, Dynamu. So you're all by your lonesome self on that tower right now. 56 seconds left. And if you're deadbeat, 
Maybe start thinking about being a little defensive, keeping Dynamu at bay. Meanwhile, here goes Dynamu. They're going to go deep into dead meat territory, get some orange ink there to try to make one more push as we are under a minute left. 4-3 on the field, but three specials for Dynamu. Yeah, Dynamu absolutely has to be a little bit aggressive here. It's a risk, but it's also something that I think they're going to have to do to be able to beat, to beat the clock and get this overtime win. You see Deadbeat throwing some toxic mist from afar. That's going to drain the ink on the tower. Some pressure applied by Power Power with a critical splat on the tower. That's going to try to reset it at normal. Dynamu going to lose the tower. Here comes a splash down by Akubaru, though, to get a critical splash. Oh. It is flat on Tim. It is now 4-2 on the field. This could be a moment of truth as that tower is now at the final checkpoint for Dynamu. Can they get through the checkpoint? 19-26. Eight seconds left. Hang in there with us, folks. 19-20. And the lead is going to go to Dynamu. Oh. And they claim the last second. Two seconds left. Two seconds left. And Dynamu with wow. the last pivotal push. And you see the emotion from their team. They realize. This was our last chance. We don't want to find ourselves in the 2-0 hole in the grand finals. And Dynamu doing a fine job of getting a critical double splat to close out that one. Yeah, I mean, they really did exactly what we were talking about. I mean, they had to get aggressive at the end there. They had to ride on that tower. They had to move it as quickly as possible, get through that last checkpoint even, and then they were able to they were able to pull it out. As we look at the replays of this one, just another incredible match that so goes good. to the final second and really Dynamu's ability to plow through that final Final checkpoint. Here they are right now, and you see the double splat that's going to be coming up right now. It's 3-2 on the field. They get through this checkpoint, and then the pressure being applied by Deadby, but Dynamu able to use that slosher to get some ink to go up top, and that's all they needed to do to close out the victory to make it 1-1 in the grand finals. And the best part is, that means we get more Splatoon. That's right. It was a really great choice by Atobaru to go up the ramp and actually kind of do a little forward damage and take out Wix. It was standing there with that slasher. It would have been so bad for Dynamu, but he was able to get up there and kind of make something happen, get that splat, and help his team to victory. Yeah, you saw Deadbeat at about the one minute mark. They kind of switched their attitude, and they're like, okay, so we're in the lead. Well, I'm just going to kind of play defensively. That may have been a mistake considering, you know, maybe they backed off a little too much and gave uh, Dynamu a little too much room to... Uh, you give them an inch, they yeah. squid all over. Yes. Well, we, we talk about in Turf War how the final minute, the final 30 seconds especially, you can't afford to get splatted. Well, that carries oh. over to all these other game modes. And you look at not being able to stay alive and that critical double splat by Dynamu late in the game, that gives them the advantage. And so you can ride that tower deep into deadbeat territory. Yeah, we're about to watch some Turf War. And the thing is, is those fundamentals in Turf War carry over to every single game mode in a very deep way. Previous matchup between Deadbeat and Dynamu in Turf War. Dynamu found themselves with a 51.9 to 42.9 victory. So we've seen Deadbeat sort of get their footing back again. They struggled a little bit their first two matches sure. in Turf War. Can they bounce back and provide some resistance for Dynamu, who was flawless in the round robin Turf War portion? I think, you know, maybe Deadbeat's coming in with a little momentum after that. Yeah, uh, maybe, absolutely. maybe they've, they've, I think they feel really good about Tower. And I think. I hope that with Turf 4, they can say, okay, we have to reset. Let's get some good strategies. Let's counter attack in ways that are appropriate. <laughs> Turf War on Humpback Pump Tracks. Certainly an exciting map. Wide open area in the middle. We know we have the mound in the middle as both teams get set. Let's go ahead. Deadbeat in the purple. Dynamu in the neon greenish yellow. Deadbeat in the purple. They're going to go with the heavy splatling, two splatter slots, and a slosher. Meanwhile, Dynamu going to go with splat dualies, a slosher, a charger, and a roller as both teams really getting a chance to ink their half of the map. We see Deadbeat kind of going to the perimeter here, Ashley. Meanwhile, Dynamu making a push for the middle mound. Yeah, I think, uh, I think these teams have different strategies. Obviously, Deadbeat wants to get that track covered in purple so that they're able to kind of flank their flank their opponents, get in there, and make something happen. Also, Baru, I'm really curious to see what he does with these duelies. Ooh, ooh power wow. and Yikes. Kakashino going to trade splats right there. You saw Power do a fine job of just avoiding that onslaught of Slosher behind that wall. However, it just wasn't enough. 4-4 four, four on the field, 2-14 right now. Pretty even match at this point. Deadbeat with a slight advantage of ink coverage on the map. As you can see, they're trying to get a push into Dynamu territory. And if you're Deadbeat, we saw them sometimes time that last push a little too late, it seemed like. We don't know whether that was by choice or accident. I'm sure they're going to look to be much more aggressive earlier on. Yeah, they're obviously playing a lot more aggressive than they did in their uh, round robin they're, they are getting into enemy territory. They are rushing down their opponents. But, you know, they got to win those one-on-ones. 
Hex is going to get splat by Kakashino once again. Kakashino just waiting around in the ink. Going to try and find some prey. Going to back up, get the splat on win right now. And that's going to start to turn the tide of momentum as we see more yellow ink covered. However, power with that heavy splat link. Going to get the splat on Kakashino. One and a half minutes left. 4-3 advantage deadbeat on the field. And really anybody's match will disappoint here. Yeah, and I mean, power. Oh, wow. He, he barely pulled off that, uh, that heavy splat link before uh, he got splatted himself. Now we're going to see the wonderful and painful Stingray. Oh! oh. Power going to get splat by Wakarun. And Power is so impressive, you could give him a raindrop and he could probably splat somebody. Meanwhile, uh, one minute left, 4-3 advantage, Deadbeat looking at the map. Deadbeat doing a fine job of pushing Dynamu back. However, still plenty of time left in this one. You see a special ready to go for Deadbeat. That purple ink covering up more than half of the map right now. And you see Deadbeat doing a fine job of getting the outer BMX track of Humpback Pump Track also. Absolutely. They are doing their best to cut off any avenue for Dynamu to get behind them, to take them by surprise they're just not allowing that to happen but here comes dynamu starting to make a push to the middle and through the bottom part of the map as you look at the top down version here and dynamon gonna start flicking some ink with that dynamo roller however using some protection from wit wit trying to get the slot on you see the splat really is a maneuverability dynamon backing up feeling a little pressure from deadbeat in that purple ink 18 seconds left four three on the field four two no. this is the chance for deadbeat to make a push they've got a four two advantage and three specials ready to go 10 seconds oh. left. Can they make that final That's push? Big Keep Dynamu at bay. Six seconds left. Four, two. Here come the specials, we are sure. Three, three at this point. And this is going to be much closer, I think, because we see a couple splatterings of yellow ink at the tail end. Yeah, yeah. This is this is going to be a close one, I think. This I see one, a lot of purple, though. I see a lot of purple. And yes, the <laughs> Judd agrees. 55.2 to 38. And so Deadbeat, which struggled initially in Turf War, hands Dynamu their first turf war loss of the afternoon and really we we see these players and Eric we talked about how they will adapt to the game as they continue to play it more and that's what we're seeing with Deadbeat. Yeah absolutely I mean that they looked like a different team from that the initial the round robin. robin yeah. yeah I mean they were so aggressive just splatting any chance they got and were able to control all the turf. Yeah, yeah there's no hesitation happening in this round of turf right. war. They went out there and they said, we have a job to do and we are going to do it. And uh, they did a really nice job. I was watching on the, the overhead map. They did a really nice job of throwing bombs and getting ink put down behind their opponents so that they had no means of escape. And that's always an excellent strategy when you're having those one-on-ones. We should also mention in the finals, the team that loses a match will have selection of the next map. So there's some strategy that goes into that. So that humpback pump track selection was made by Deadbeat after they lost tower control. So you wonder what these teams are factoring in as they look at not only the game mode, but how it applies to the map. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, after practicing, these teams have preferences of which maps they feel the strongest in. Of course, depending on the game mode, maybe you feel better about a certain map uh, in Rainmaker, or maybe you feel better about another map in Tower Control. So I kind of love that they picked Muscle Forge Fitness for this one. Muscle Forge Fitness for our next round of Rainmaker. Right now, Deadbeat with a 2-1 advantage in this best of seven grand finals matchup of the 2017 Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. A victory here. It's not a must win, but it would, it would go a very far way for Deadbeat as far as giving some distance between them and Dynamu and putting some pressure on Dynamu. So we look at Rainmaker. What are some of the things that you think Deadbeat will try to focus in on this match as they had success last time in Rainmaker? I think they're going to have to absolutely neutralize uh, Autobaru because he's going to be out there hunting. He's for, a hunter. For he's sure. a hunter. He's going to be out there just hunting for anybody who's accidentally <laughs> been led astray from the flock to pick them off. And I think this is going to be a really great Let's really make it game. rain on Muscle Forge Fitness. Let's go ahead and get to your teams right now. Deadbeat in the green. They're going to go with the heavy splatling, two splatter shots, and a slosher. Meanwhile, Dynamu in the purple. You've got a roller, charger, slosher, and splatter shot pro. Shield initially going to be bursted by Deadbeat. However, that Rainmaker still up for grabs. Nobody claiming that 4-2 advantage, 3-2 advantage. Dynamu on the field as they grab the Rainmaker. They're going to push it to 85 before it gets seized. And right now, we already see both teams being very aggressive, wasting no time trying to get to that Rainmaker. That's right. You're going to see power hanging back with that heavy splatling and just doing everything in his power to target the Rainmaker. He did that with Autobaro. Autobaro picked up the Rainmaker. He was like, no, my friend. No, no, not today. 
85 nothing advantage right now. Looks like that Rainmaker's gonna get reset right now. No, it's gonna be grabbed by Dynamu as they push it to a 63 nothing lead at this point. 4-3 advantage on the map right now for Deadbeat. Plenty of time left in this one. 407 going and right now Deadbeat unable to really get a push outside of their half of the map here, Ashley. Yeah, this is uh this is interesting because you can see Hexen got a little bit too far ahead there into enemy territory and ended up getting splatted by the Rainmaker. However, Tim gonna go to some uncharted territory. No ink over there to take a 46-63 advantage for Deadbeat before Dynamu gets the splat. And now you've got a little bit more pressure applied by Deadbeat as there's all sorts of splatting going on. Dynamon with that Dynamo Roller, as we said, trying to burst the shield, no collateral damage there. 63-31 advantage and we see Dynamon just reset the Rainmaker, move it to the middle, and you like that move there, Ash. Good, That was a good choice. Obviously, you want to get it back to the middle as quickly as possible, and walking it there, or even swimming there, is not the best idea. Especially since by the time you reset, get back into action, that shield probably will not have been bursted yet. Three minutes left in this one. 4-4 four, four on the field. Two specials for Dynamu. 31-63 advantage for Deadbeat. Rainmaker up for grabs in the middle. Both teams just trying to feel each other out, find that way they can get some ink covered so they can find a great route and an escort to get to the other side of this map. Yeah, you'll notice a lot of these teams uh, at this high level play don't just immediately grab the Rainmaker. That's always the thing you always want to do. It's your instinct. You want to just grab it, but no, you got to hold off. Tim yeah. is bringing his lunch pail and hard hat and putting in work. Stops the tent missiles from going. Gets another splat there, so two critical splats for Tim. And now the Rainmaker, Tim, is starting to take over this match. 31-63. However, Wit going to get stopped by Akubato. 63-31. Advantage Deadbeat at this point. Akubato just holding back, trying to maintain some leverage on Deadbeat. Meanwhile, Deadbeat being very aggressive and getting Diamond pushed on their heels. I have to say, there is a lot of green on this map, and Deadbeat is doing a really great job of creating lanes, creating problems for Dynamu, and it's, I mean, it's obviously it's going very well for them. How about Dynamon shooting the Rainmaker behind a wall of coverage and getting the splat as it's now 63-31, getting to the two-minute marks. Things are going to start to get a little bit more inky here. Dynamu, they've got the early deficit going on right now, but still plenty of time left. And right now, we see Power trying to find some position, trying to hold that back line, provide some cover and a route for his team. Meanwhile, Dynamu still kind of stuck in that corner because of where the Rainmaker's at, actually. Yeah, uh, well, Witt and Hexen are doing a really good job of throwing bombs out and keeping uh, anybody from Dynamu from getting to the Rainmaker. So, for fortunately, Dynamu's able to pick it up at this point, but there is a lot of green on the ground. They're going to have to make some serious gains in the last minute and a half of this game. Dynamon with the Rainmaker, though, moving across the grates at this point, trying to get a couple critical splats. And this is going to start to move their score much quicker. Oh, we've got 31 47, but a critical oh. splat. Great defense by Deadbeat. You really? see Hexen with uh. the splatter shot, able to prevent Dynamu from advancing anymore. But don't you hold your breath quite yet because Dynamu grabs it again. They're trying to push it. However, Deadbeat retreating them as we're just to a minute left. 4 1 advantage on the field for Deadbeat as they secure it. Hexen doing an absolutely fantastic job of hiding underneath this great over here and taking everybody out as they walk across it because they can't swim they can't hide there's nowhere for them to go under a minute left tim with the rainmaker right now and when you when you've got the lead we saw them be a little hesitant in tower control what do you have to do with your tim to try to get some help as we see the splat by akubaru 40 seconds left and you have to leave i mean you gotta have you gotta have a teammate with you and i think that's such a key thing I, it'll be interesting to see if akubaru can win this one-on-one -on -one with power he does critical one-on-one -on -one victory for akubaru can you get another splat but no win oh, providing some support right there 47 31 27 seconds left 3 3 on the field dead beat with the victory here proves a 3 and 1 dynamu trying to tie things up in this grand finals right now wit putting some pressure on walker but no walker, walker getting some help right out. now walker Rune trying to push this they need one more push dynamu here they don't have much time left on the clock here comes the final push expect the match to come down to this right here uh, trying to get the push changed. getting flanked from behind oh. impressive slap by tim Three seconds left. Is that going to do it? it? And that'll do it. Deadbeat able to recover and flank and get behind the Rainmaker quick enough in that match before Dynamu can make one more final push, Ashley. One of the things Deadbeat did really well is, again, that fundamental turf war mentality of put down ink. They had so much green on that map at one point. It was like, if we pick up the Rainmaker, that's that's a free road to, to a win. So. 
to be able to put down that much ink is a, it's just so helpful and and also keeping your opponents away yeah that mechanic helps like even if you're not near the action you're not near the rainmaker there's always something you can do to help your team even if you're on the other side of the map is making lanes towards the enemy goal we talk about the teamwork that's required but sometimes individual efforts can turn the tide of any match and tim in this previous match went on a rampage for a short little Absolutely. while that really helped turn things. At this point, it's 63-31. Deadbeat was trying to get a little bit more momentum, but Tim with the splat on Atubardo, going to avoid the ink coming from Dynamon. Great bombs. Another splat by Deadbeat on Dynamon, and then going to drop down and get the splat on Kakashino. That's going to give another advantage. And then seven seconds left, you see Wakarun get splatted from behind by Tim. And Tim not only playing some great offense, but great defense also, Ashley. Yeah, and I mean, if you're on, if you're on defense, the best thing for you to do is is to have spatial awareness. And I think that is a such a key component, especially in these sort of other modes where I, obviously the main objective is not turf war, uh, where you're going around and you're saying, okay, like I need to know where the Rainmaker is. I need to know where my opponents are. I need to know where my teammates are so I can yep. go help them. There's so much spatial awareness involved. And you can see both of these teams doing a really good job of it, but I think Deadbeat a little bit better last round. 3-1 advantage for Deadbeat in these grand finals. They win one more match. They are the winners of the 2017 Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. However, Dynamu has a few things to say about that. Dynamu, it's tower control. For our game five, they select Moray Towers. They were victorious on it previously. However, we saw in that previous match, Deadbeat essentially had that game won until late in this one. Very so late. What does Deadbeat learn from their loss last time? As we've said before, We've heard from Penguin that he loves to learn from watching his own mistakes. What do they do differently in this match? I mean, I think that they have to really make an effort to have, I, I think Power is going to have to really push on making sure that he is using that heavy, if, if he's using that heavy splatling, I think that he's going to have to really do a great job of, uh, of coverage. Game five of the grand finals. Tower control, more A towers. Deadbeat in the blue. One more victory, and they will be your champions. Meanwhile, Dynamu inking for their lives. Dynamu going with the blaster, slosher, charger, roller. Meanwhile, Deadbeat going with the heavy splatling, two splatter shots, and a blaster as Kakashino early on. Dynamu in the yellow, as we mentioned. Deadbeat in the blue. Kakashino going to ride that tower. Early advantage right now, 90 to 100. Popping off the tower. Going to lose the one-on-one -on -one to Tim, though, as Tim gets the impressive splat. Tower's gonna go ahead and reset. And as we mentioned, it's a little bit easier to get up the towers and more mobility in Moray Towers. Yeah, and this is a huge thing for anybody who's ever been splatted in Moray Towers by a charger. That's gonna be a really handy change. It's going to be Tim once again helping out his team, hopping on the tower as Deadby takes the lead as they approach the very first checkpoint. Here comes the splash down, gonna try and clear out some traffic, but no. Kakashino gonna get that splat with the slosher. Meanwhile, Stingray putting some pressure, but Hexen trying to get into Dynamu territory. Feels some flank pressure behind him. Gonna get the splat on Dynamon, and that is huge as Deadby gonna ride this to the first checkpoint. They've got a 4-3 advantage. They've gotta lock it down here at this point. Gonna feel some pressure. They get the critical splat on Antifaro. Huge splat. And Deadby doing a fine job of holding off the pushes from Dynamu as they advance the tower. Absolutely, they'll easily pass this checkpoint. They were able to take out a lot of Dynamu. And now you can see they're coming down one by one. Never a good idea. One more checkpoint stands between Dead Beat and Victory 3-1 in the best of seven. One more victory would do it. However, a double splat by the splat bomb as Kakashino doing in some work right there. That's going to be some great defense. However, Dead Beat with a huge 90-6 lead. They can do it. They're just flirting with victory right now, but you've got a pair of Dynamo on the tower. Dynamon says, I'm not ready to end this platoon World Inkling Invitational yet. I got some more things to say here. 90 to 6. You see the 4-2 advantage on the field for Deadbeat right now. Yeah, I mean, you can see uh, oh man, Tim is working really he's working overtime right now, trying to take out everybody. Takes out Dynamon. That was a huge, huge blast. Deadbeat hopping back on the tower again. They see how close victory could be to them. Meanwhile, Dynamu, they are still fighting for survival in this tournament. We see the toxic mist that'll slow down some of the momentum for Deadbeat. We see a super jump gonna be on the tower right now, probably gonna get keyed in there. Tim able to safely land at this point. Meanwhile, Atubaro being contained by two members of Deadbeat at the top. Tim gonna retrieve right here. Meanwhile, tower being reclaimed by Dynamu. And you see how important this critical push by Deadbeat has been. And they're not putting their foot off the pedal right now. No way. They're being very aggressive. They want this. They can taste those super sea snails. Kakashino going with the 
10 to Missiles. That's certainly going to help right there. However, Tower's going to get paused for a moment. You've got 215 left, a 6 to 90 lead for Deadbeat. Remember, one more victory, and they are your champions of the 2017 Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. Two minutes left, Tower in the middle, still up for grabs. And is this the point where Deadbeat realizes their folly from the previous match and looks to push it even more? Yeah, I, I mean, gosh, you can see Power really putting in the work right now, jumping up and down, getting that, getting the great splat right there of Dynamon. He's up there just getting it done. Tim with the flank on Kakashino going to start riding the tower. It is a 3-3 tie on the field. Couple of specials, 3-2 on the field. Two specials also for Deadbeat. Can they continue to push that tower? They're hopping off momentarily. Meanwhile, you see Dynamute just being patient, waiting for the tower. We're at a minute 30. Still enough time, but you're going to start limiting the amount of pushes you have. If you're Deadbeat, you got to stay aggressive. Yeah, I mean, we saw what happened before. I mean, this is their... They have six. There's there's only defense to be played, but anything can happen in the last minute of this match. Dynamon trying to push into Deadbeat territory. Meanwhile, Dynamu gonna hop on the tower. Dynamon got that Stingray ready to go, looking to try to get a couple critical splats. This is where Dynamu clutched victory away from the grasp of Deadbeat last time. Can they do it again? They're at the first checkpoint. One minute left. It's gonna most likely have to go into overtime if Dynamu wants to get that victory. 58 seconds left. They're oh, trying to push it past the point. Flat. They survive as Rock and Rune. It's a 3-3. Equal footing on the field. 3-2 advantage, though. Walker Rune trying to get a critical splat on Wit. Wit just behind the counter. However, oh, Tower lost. They really didn't good. hop on it. 44 seconds. 6 to 53. One more checkpoint remaining for Dynamu. If they win, they continue to keep this grand finals going on. If Deadbeat is victorious, it's over. 4-2 advantage on the field for Deadbeat and Ashley. This is where Deadbeat has to make that final championship push. They absolutely have to push really hard right now. All of these respawns are going to be coming into the field. Kakashino is a force to be recognized with with a slosher you do not want to be in his face this could be the final 18 seconds of our tournament 6 to 41 lead for deadbeat you see deadbeat pushing deep into dynamu territory oh, however it's... that splashdown will be negated 10 seconds left can dynamu get on the tower to force overtime wits on the tower five more seconds from the splatoon sterling squid if deadbeat can hold it dynamu's but no dynamu's gonna hop on top we're into oh, overtime no. it just needs one more deadbeat to hop on top Meanwhile, Dynamu, they can still claim victory and push us into another mode, and they're looking strong. They have one more checkpoint to get to. Dead Everybody's down, jumping onto this field. tower right now. Everyone's jumping on the tower, as you said. Wait, trying to get a couple splats. It's got to sit this checkpoint. Oh. Oh. Two teams, wow. the absolute best in the world, but you see Deadbeat able to survive the final push that oh. Dynamu was trying to put on. And you look at Dynamu, just how impressive they were the wow. entire day. You see the skill from all of their players and just an absolutely incredible match here, Ashley. Unbelievable. And I mean, they, oh man, Dynamu really pushing at the end there and doing their absolute best. But you know what? When you've got a cluster of, when you've got a, a cluster of squidlings on that tower, that is really dangerous to be doing in overtime. And I, I I feel like that was a thing that, uh, that a, you know, a burst bomb can take care of. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. De uh, Deadbeat, so vital in those last moments. I mean, they all had actually double digits in splats and assists, which you don't see a lot. Huge, yeah. huge. Real team efforts. Yep. Deadbeat, representing North America, your champions of the 2017 Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. That'll do it for us, but before we get going, let's go ahead and toss it to the, to the producer of Splatoon 2, Mr. Nogami, to hand out the Splatoon Sterling Squid to our champions.
はいでは優勝したデッドビートの皆さん本当におめでとうございます I want to give a hearty congratulations to our tournament winners Dead Moon or Dead Beat <laughs> えー、そして、えー、とダイナメムの皆さん、えー、それから、えー、とライジングムーンの皆さんそしてブルーリングとオクトリングの皆さん本当に素晴らしい戦いぶりでした。And also, let's hear congratulations for the other teams Dynamu, Blue Ring Octolings, and Rising Moon. So, the audience, 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 the Thank you, everyone here in the booth, and as well as all the Splatoon fans watching from home around the world for sticking with us for so long. Uh, <laughs> I'm incredibly pleased with how splendid this atmosphere has become, and I want to say that I think the reason we're blessed with such a good experience with this tournament is thanks to the support from fans around the world, and I want to thank you genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Splatoon? はえー、いよいよ来月7月の21日に発売されます。Splatoon 2 is finally on arrival next month on July 21st。皆さんの応援にお応えできるよう、えっ、ー、と我々イカ研究所も力いっぱい盛り上げていきますので、引き続き応援をよろしくお願いします。You can rest assured that in answering all the support from fans around the world, we will continue our squid research with all the power we have. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody.